Hello there. Welcome back to Jenny Designs with Paper. Thanks for stopping by my channel today. I'm working on an art journal page. So get comfy and let's get crafty. This is the mood board for the Artsy Trio. It's like from June or it's from July. It's from July. Um, I'm still behind. I'm working on catching up, but this is all about summertime and I'm focusing on the florals today. So I have on my desk a, a copy of the mood board and I have a piece of mixed media paper. This is about five by eight inches and I'm going to cover it up with a piece of yellow print pattern paper. I'm trying to like use my pattern paper stash. I have a lot of 12 by 12 inch pattern papers. So I'm trying to use them up and this is a really great way to do that. I don't use 12 by 12 papers as much. Um, I find for card making, which is my other paper crafting, that the smaller um, print in the smaller of the six by six or eight by eight pads are a little bit better. So I've put this piece of pattern paper on top of my art journal page and I've ad adhered it with some Liquitex um, matte fluid medium. And I put a little bit of that fluid medium over the top of the paper as well. And that will make that paper um, a little non-porous and a little bit easier for receiving um, other liquid mediums. I'm going to be adding some acrylic ink. So I'm going to go ahead and heat set this with my heat gun, and then we're going to jump into adding some gesso. So I've pulled from my drawer this old pot of gesso. It is really thick. So I'm going to put a little bit of it on my desktop with a palette knife there, and then I'm going to add some water to it. And my first thought was to um, add this to my art journal page with my fingers, um, and then I decided I don't like that. <laughs> It is mostly because I don't, I get messy enough as it is. Intentionally getting messy is really difficult. <laughs> I, I, I get it on my fingers and then it ends up everywhere else, right? The places I don't want it to be. So I grabbed a wet paintbrush and I'm going to go ahead and add that gesso to cover the front of my page. It will um, dry back a little bit more translucent. Um, it will not be quite as opaque as it looks when it's wet. Um, and also I'll be doing a couple things to kind of distress it as well. So once I had that cleaned up and my, clean my surface off a little bit, I went ahead and used that wet paint brush to kind of move that gesso around on the page. And then I heat set it. Um, I decided I was going to be a little bit more aggressive about how I removed or distressed this background. So I needed that gesso to be a little drier to make that paper just a little less prone to tearing or peeling. So I did spend um, a good solid two minutes, maybe. I don't know. This is on fast forward, so maybe it wasn't a whole two minutes, but it felt like two minutes um, heat setting this to make sure that dresser was all nice and, and dry. And then I pulled in a baby wipe and I'm kind of scrubbing it like I'm, I'm putting a little bit of force into it. And there are places where that yellow print um, shine or pulls up back through the gesso. The gesso is coming off. It's a little bit distressed. And... I picked up a microfiber cloth and went over the top of that to kind of remove any water left over from the baby wipe. Um, the next thing I want to do is focus on the color palette of my art journal page here. So I've grabbed some distress inks or sorry, distress paints from my drawer that kind of go with that color palette in the bottom center block of that um, mood board, starting with the green. I did put a little bit of green down on my desktop and then I almost put my finger in it again and decided, yeah, I'm not going there. <laughs> I picked up um, uh, the same baby wipe and I'm kind of adding this down. This will eventually be the bottom of my art journal page. I'm working on it upside down to kind of try and um, not make it so intentional, if that makes sense. So the baby wipe was clearly too wet <laughs> and the paint was, was not... Um, it was not going down dark enough. Like it was not doing what I wanted it to do. I probably should have used like um, a, a big wipe out of my trash, a dry one, or a dry paper towel or tissue or something. So when I added the blue, I did grab a Kleenex. I have a perpetual box of Kleenex in my office because allergies are a real thing. And um, yeah, sneezing. Oh my gosh. The grass right now, y'all, is killing me. We had a lot of rain here where I live in Virginia. The last month or so because it's kind of like summer is kind of the beginning of our rainy season especially with the tropical storms that moved up the east coast and our grass has grown and my sneezes are sneezing <laughs> 
Um, after I added that little bit of a light blue, I decided I didn't like how pale things were. So I got a makeup sponge out of my stash and cut it up into a bunch of pieces. And I'm adding that green and the blue back on to what looks like the top of the page um, with the makeup sponge. The, um, the idea behind working on upside down was actually something that I, I don't know if I consciously decided to do it or not. Like, um, I just thought, you know, I'm going to put the green here and the blue here, then I'm going to flip it upside down and, and do the rest on the top. And I don't know if that's something I heard somewhere or read somewhere, but it made it so I was not um, conscious of this being the ground. So it, it didn't go straight, I guess is what I'm trying to say. So I have this sunburst stencil. I think this is a tailored expression stencil. And I'm going to add some orange and yellow acrylic paints to this sunburst. And I'm just dabbing it into that orange paint and, and then dabbing it through the stencil lines. Um, I'm not trying, I'm not going for accuracy here or like, um, like I don't care if the entire opening is covered in paint. It just, if it's a, if it's a little less perfect, that's okay. I'm okay with that. After I got a line of the orange down, I then went with the yellow and um, intentionally went into that orange a bit um, to kind of blend them together. And then as I get to the center of that starburst, I will be using um, just the yellow and I will be using a little bit less of it on the makeup sponge. So it looks like it's, I've got three colors going on there. It's really just two, but you know, it's all good. And then I can blend the orange and the yellow together to kind of blend them in again down there at the bottom or top. So um, after this was, after I was done, I, I ran and put the stencil in a sink of water and I decided to push it back a little bit with some gesso. And just as I went and brushed across the top of her, I was like, oh, this is not dry. <laughs> so I was kind of smearing that yellow paint. Um, so I went ahead and heat set that again. Um, acrylic paint, once it's dry, it won't smear easily. I mean, yes, you can smear it, but it won't smear easily, especially on paper once it's dry. So I did go ahead and heat set that. And then I picked up my paintbrush and my watered down gesso and went across the um, page again to kind of push those colors into the background. I don't want them to be the focus. I just want them to be the background. And so adding some white gesso over the top, a very thin layer of watered down layer of gesso will allow those colors to peek through without being so in your face. So I'm going to go ahead and wipe off my desk here. And um, then we're going to heat set that again, get that gesso good and dry. And then we're going to move on to some other parts of this page. Like, um, have you all noticed sometimes that like you, you can, like, okay, for me, like the beginning of the summer, I'm like, oh, good, regular schedule. Like there is no schedule, right? And then by the end of the summer, you're like, man, I can't wait for life to go back to normal and for my days to have a routine. That's kind of where I am right now, like getting a routine in my days. Um, like my kids started school this past week. So it's been kind of um, weird because I have two college kids at home. So they're not in classes yet. In fact, one of them finished her semester already and won't start again until January. So it's kind of weird. But anyway, so to add a little bit of black to the background, I grabbed this um, Tim Holtz Stampers Anonymous text stamp and some archival ink. And I'm just kind of, I went all the way around the left side or up and down the left side and then just a little bit on the bottom. Um, my focal point is one of these stickers that I purchased from, well, it's actually a Mother's Day gift from one of my children. Um, and I'm going to put it in this Tim Holtz frame, but I didn't like how thick the frame was. So I just peeled, but it's kind of, kind of a lacy texture on the front or a lacy image. Um, so I just peeled it off. <laughs> it, it's been in my craft room so long. It was not hard. <laughs> um, I do need to create a backing for this frame though, because this little, this girl is a sticker. So that whole white background of hers will, will disappear. And so I need, I need something other than my original page to put it on. I wanted the, the girl to have this like white frame around her behind this or white background behind her on, under this frame. So I've got a piece of scrap, um, white, this is just copy paper and I'm trimming it down to make sure that it fits inside the, the frame without sticking out on the edges and um, it works. 
So I'm going to go ahead and add some double-sided adhesive to the back of my frame. So this is, okay, depends where you buy it, right? I got this from the, from scrapbook.com, so it's sequin tape. But like every um, company that sells this has another name for it. Sorry if you can hear my dog. My daughter got a cat for her birthday, and the dog is being insane. So hold on, let me help the dog. Okay, sorry, I'm back. And, you know, as if it's not bad enough that we have deer in our yard all the time. Now she likes to, I mean, she barks at everything. And I think actually it was the deer, not the cat. She seems to not be too fussed about the cat, to be honest. So we'll see. Anyway, um, I peeled the backing tape, backing paper off of the frame. And I'm adding this piece of white copy paper to the back of it. Um, I started to cut out the girl on this white because this girl was one of five stickers on a page, right? And I trimmed it down and I started to trim it out. And then I remembered that they're stickers. Duh, you don't have to trim it out. <laughs> I don't, there was a lot going on today. Like <laughs> my, um, my summer, I did not spend a ton of time in my craft room this summer. So I'm a little bit rusty. Like I'm rusty on the editing. I'm rusty on the voiceover. I'm rusty. I'm rusty on the crafting. So yeah, anyway, I got this sweet picture of this girl with the flowers in her hair into the frame and I went through my ephemera drawer and I pulled out every kind of flower image that I could find, plus a couple of other things that I didn't end up using. And um, I have this, this sheet of flowers that are um, um, stickers and I, that I got from, I think these I got these from or it's a dollar spot or Amazon. I don't even remember. And then I have all these pre-cut stickers that I know I got from Amazon. And then I have some chipboard stickers that are um, from, um, oh my gosh, they're Vicky Papanayu collection from um, Stamperia. So anyway, I decided I wanted a more greenery from this sheet of stickers. So I went through the sheets and pulled, pulled out some more greenery. And I'm just trimming the stickers down a little bit. And then I'm going to place them here. Some of the stickers that were pre-cut from my, my Amazon stash um, were a little bit bigger than I wanted. So I decided to go ahead and use these um, the sheet of stickers that I'm trimming out now to, for the greenery. And then some of the roses and stuff. I still did use the butterfly and some chipboard stickers. But um, I cut out a couple of the roses. And I'm kind of zooming through this so that you can kind of see the process but not spend a ton of time on it because I went through the layout for this. In my mind, I wanted this bunch of flowers on the like the bottom right corner and then that butterfly just up on the top left. But the size and shape of the flower stickers really came into play because they couldn't be bigger than the girl's head or it would look weird. Um, yeah, it was a whole thing. It was a whole thing. Um, I wanted to pop this up a little bit, but not like foam tape pop it up. So I just grabbed another piece of copy paper, um, like a quarter sheet of copy paper, and folded it in half. And that was just enough to get that frame up off the edge a little bit so I could slide my flower stickers in between it, or underneath it rather. I did glue that paper shut, and then I glued it to the back of the frame. And then I'm going to go ahead and glue the picture frame onto my art journal page. I kind of sort of have it down in that... Um, two third, like just below center on the bottom right. Um, then the name of this mood board was um, reaching for the sun. So I was trying to not cover up that sunburst kind of thing that I had going on so much. But I, I'm focusing more on the florals and the, the, the flowers and the summer colors that were in the mood board. So here I am just going through and trying to get these stickers off my fingers and onto the art journal page. These are, um, I think it's called PET paper. So it's kind of um, like a transparent or translucent tissue paper sticker. Um, but they all have, I have to get them off the backings, which is also a whole nother thing. <laughs> but I, so I've got the greenery down there. I've got that pink and that red rose in there. And then I realized I never trimmed my paper down after I put the yellow pattern paper on top and got it dry. So, ugh. <laughs> so I grabbed First, I was going to use that guillotine trimmer, but I couldn't line it up exactly. So then I grabbed um, my Fisker's wire guided trimmer because with that wire, you can see exactly where you're cutting, which um, the blades, you know, they don't last as long as I would love them to. But for, for detail work, it really is awesome. So then I went back to the stickers and I wanted to get this sunflower 
up there on that um, right hand side. The flowers ended up going more up the right hand side of the frame as opposed to just in the corner, but that's okay. Um, the sunflower does hang off, so I just folded it back. No biggie, right? I just folded it back. In my brain, I think I thought I was going to put um, some more paper on the back of this because, you know, usually I do. So it wasn't, for our, for the RC Trio group, I usually do add paper to the back. So it was no big deal to cover up those, um, that flower and just have it fold over the back. So here I have a couple of the chipboard flowers, a little, little blue one, a little yellow one, a couple of pink ones. I'm going to actually stick the pink ones like on the corner of the frame so that those flowers come up around the frame. One of the stickers, the greenery stickers, I did have one little petal come across the top of the frame too. And it kind of is perfect. It like, it, it's just enough of that greenery branching around the frame that it looks, um, it, it's right. It looks right. I don't know what the other word for that is. So this little green butterfly is also a Stamparia chipboard. I'm going to put it on the top left corner of that frame. And all that is left now, I think, is to add a quote. And I found a quote that says, a flower cannot blossom without sunshine and man cannot live without love. And that is attributed to Max Mueller. So I printed that on a piece of copy paper when I printed out my mood board. And I'm just going to add that to the top of my page with a little bit of Tombow liquid glue. And I'm mostly centering it. I think it's high enough that the um, holes from the hole punch won't bother it too much. So here I flipped my art journal page over. I'm adding some more of that tape and tear, tear and tape, or whatever you want to call it, around the borders of my page. Um, this gives me the, the sticky that I need to put the, the other half of that pattern paper on the back. So it's the same yellow, white, yellow and white print pattern paper that I had on the front. It also uses up my pattern paper stash, which, ooh, I totally went out of focus there. There we go. <laughs> It, I'm using up my pattern paper stash, which I like because I have, I mean, hello, my channel is Designs of Paper, right? I have this thing for pretty pattern paper, but I also have this thing with not using my paper. Oh, and I don't want to be a hoarder. I don't want my kids to, you know, look at my craft room and go, mom, you're such a hoarder because kind of I am. <laughs> I did add some liquid glue to the middle of that um, art journal page, the back of it. So the, the dry adhesive will hold the paper down immediately and then liquid adhesive liquid adhesive wow words are hard will give it a more permanent more um um hard i don't know what the right word is here uh, a more controlled adhesion <laughs> i don't know what the right phrase is here so i'm using my trimmer again to trim off the sides and the side with the flowers that little blue chipboard flower it hangs off the edge just a tiny bit and so it was not really possible. Like I was worried I was going to rip the flower off the page if I used my trimmer. So I pulled out my really long Tim Holtz scissors and it cut through it just like a champ. No biggie. And it just, I mean, I'm talking like the very, very teeniest part. So I'm going to go ahead and sign the bottom. I did date it July because this was the July mood board. And I know I'm behind, but I'm getting there, getting there. Punch the holes in my page to put in my binder and I'm gluing the mood board picture down. So I put all of my art journal pages into an A5 size three ring binder because I found over the years, I don't like working in already bound books. So here we're gonna zoom in just a little bit so you can see that gorgeous sticker and a little bit on the quote. And I hope you enjoyed my video. I know that I've been a little sporadic this summer with my videos, but I hope to get back on the track and have lots of fun things for you. Thanks for hanging out with me today. I hope you liked the video. Here are a couple other videos I think you will like. I've also added that subscribe button. If you haven't subscribed, I would love it if you did. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it and have a really fabulous day.